So today we're going to be looking at Android applications in an in emulated Android environment. Uh, we're not going to be looking at how to reverse them, but we're going to be looking at how to inspect um, encrypted traffic coming out of the Android device. And we're going to do that today in um, a Linux distribution called Kali Linux. You know, if you're not familiar with it, it's just a, a Debian slash Ubuntu based um, Linux distribution with an immense amount of security tools in it. It's commonly used for pen testing and things like that, but today we're going to use it for a, um, a reversing slash inspection environment. We're going to do that because it has a lot of built-in dependencies already in it, and it lends itself very well to testing out tools and, and doing things like this. Um, uh, to get Kali Linux, just Google Kali Linux and you'll be able to download an ISO or a VMware file off of uh, their site, then fire it up in your uh, virtualization software. Um, before you fire it up though, what you want to do is go into the settings and you want to look at the processors and memory. Again, before, before you power it on. And you want to enable the hypervisor applications in this virtual machine. Uh, for VTX and EPT. You want to make sure that that's checked. You also want to make sure you have a decent amount of RAM and decent amount of processors assigned to your VM. Once you do that, go ahead and turn it on. Once you turn it on, you should get to the desktop here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is download, download Android Studio. Uh, just Google Android Studio, download it for Linux. You'll get a tar file, unzip the tar file, then go into the Android Studio folder, into the bin directory, Scroll down to the bottom, there's a studio.sh bash file. You want to launch, uh, run that to launch Android Studio. Um, I went ahead and just created a desktop shortcut for it, so I don't have to go in the folder every time, and that's right here. So we just double click that, and it should launch Android Studio, there we go. Once we get it up and running, here it is. We want to go down to configure then AVD Manager. Once we get to that, um, this is your first time running it. You won't have any devices, so you need to create a virtual device. Um, pick a phone. I just picked the Pixel 2. Now here you need to select uh, Operating System slash SDK. Um, I picked 29, so not the, the latest release. The one right before it. You'll notice that at the top here there's little tabs. Um, all of these images are x86. x86 images run fairly well. Uh, that's why we enabled the hypervisor before in the VMware settings so that we can run these type of images. If you don't have a CPU that supports running hypervisor applications, you may have to run these ARM v7, v8 images and those are really, 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 really slow. Um, so slow they're, they're kind of inhibitive of even doing this. And it even warns you in, in red over here on the right that, you know, run x86 images if you can. So, fortunately for us, we can. And it'll ask you to download the image. It's a gig and a half or so. You download it. Once you download it, you'll get to this screen. And you can configure a couple more things for your phone and hit finish. Now, if you've run an image before, um, the size on disk here, it may say, you know, somewhere around like 7 gigs. Um, if you want to start a new device, all you do is right click it, go to wipe data, and then it'll wipe it and it'll drop back down to the original size and do a new setup of a new device. Then we just hit OK, or play button and it'll go. So uh, these x86 images, they, they are a lot faster than the RMV7 ones, but um, you know we're running in a virtualized environment and we're emulating a device on top of that, so it's going to be a little bit slow. So while that's starting up, we'll go ahead and look at uh, this other shell script that I have here on the screen. So the reason uh, I chose to use Kali for this is because it already has man in the middle proxy set up. Um, but to get man in the middle proxy configured and everything, it's a bit of a hassle. Um, so I just kind of wrote it all in a, in a shell script to do all that for me so I didn't have to do all of this stuff every time I wanted to use it. Um, this isn't a script that comes with man in the middle proxy. This is again something I wrote and I'll have this up on the website for um, Along with a little article that kind of goes along with this video So if you want to use it you can go over there ringzerolabs.com and be able to find it 
I'll also leave a, a link to the article down in the description for this video. But uh, all this script does is set up some forwarding variables. It'll go ahead and install pip for Python, add a man in the middle proxy user, set up some IP table um, forwarding stuff. It will then install the certificates to our base system for man in the middle and trust them. And then start up the, the web browser for man in the middle, sleep a few seconds, and then open Firefox to that uh, man in the middle proxy interface. And that's all this script does. So, um, so yeah, should be up on our site. Alright, we'll notice here that our device is almost booted up. And as soon as it gets booted up, there we go. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is just open Chrome. And then accept. And again, it, it you know, emulated device on top of a virtualized thing and recording video is going to be a little bit slow. But there we go, just no thanks. Now it launches Chrome. And we're good. Alright. <clears throat> so if we just search for something, it's like bags. I don't know why I always search for bags, but it's just always my default check the internet thing to search for is bags. I don't know why. So we see here that, you know, it search for bags. Okay, cool. Um, and we see the little green padlock at the top. That means that our connection is secure. We're over HTTPS. If we click it, maybe, there it goes. If we go to details and certificate information, we can see that we have, you know, we're, we're connected with Google certificate. Um, uh, it's still, you know, it's not expired. It's good. Everything's valid. Um, so we have a valid, you know, encrypted connection to Google for our search to, for bags. So we can click out of all of this. Maybe. There. Alright. So now we can click the little square. It should pop up our windows. The process is running. And then get rid of that. And then we're good. Alright. So now, if we open up a terminal, we want to launch the launch our scripts. It's going to ask you for the root password or pseudo password. Go ahead and do all that setup that I just mentioned. It then has an interactive portion of where you need to trust the certificate. Uh, yours will probably only have one listed, uh, man in the middle .crt. Um, and you want to make sure there's a little star next to it. You can put the star there by pressing spacebar and then tab OK. And there's the man in the middle server was launched. And then Firefox should launch momentarily. There it is. All right. Cool. So now we have that. So now let's launch Chrome. You'll notice that we still have a green thing up here, but this is from our previous session. Um, this isn't live. So, what we need to do is navigate away just to google.com. You'll notice that it's complaining now that the connection isn't private. Um, if we go up here again, if we click on that in details, Certificate information. We'll notice now that the certificate's from Google, but we'll notice here it says man in the middle proxy. That's our certificate that we installed on the system. Now, the phone doesn't trust it because it realizes that this is not a valid certificate authority. You know, it wasn't issued by a valid certificate authority, it's just self signed. 
So it's going to complain that, hey, you're, you're trying to connect with an encrypted session using an invalid certificate. And that's what it's warning about. So we want to make the phone trusted. So we go to mitm.it. That's going to connect to our local proxy server. It's going to ask you what device you're running. Android. Then download the certificate. name it, just whatever, hit OK, and now it's installed. So if we go back, google.com, you can see that, yep, now we have a green padlock. And if we inspect the certificate again, certificate information, you'll notice that it's still the man in the middle proxy, but we have a valid encrypted session to Google. You'll notice over here on the right that we have HTTPS traffic and we can see inside of it some content there because just getting stuff and yeah, we can view the responses and all that. It's great. All right. So if we hit the little blue man in the middle proxy and go to new, delete all flows, yes, that'll just clear out our stuff. Now, since it's an Android phone, it, it calls out to Google a lot, so we want to get rid of all that stuff, just a bunch of noise. So we want to do exclamation point tilde D for domain, google.com. That should get rid of most of the Google stuff. All right. Now, when you install Android Studio, um, let's open up a new tab in Terminal. It installs an Android folder to your home directory, so tilde forward slash Android. SDK, Platform, Tools, and ADB. ADB is the command line thing that will allow you to install and uninstall apps to the phone. So we want to do install. And then you notice here that I have just a random APK on the desktop. That was just something I downloaded from a malware site. Um, it's a pretty dumb piece of malware, but it, I mean it's effective if uh, you get users to install it and click on it. So we'll just install that and see what it does. Again, we're not going to reverse this or anything. This is just to show the traffic. So install it. Installed successfully. Now if we look at our menu of applications here, we see an ads block. That's the malware. Click it. There we go. We see the first call out. We notice that it grabs something of 2.9 megabytes. So that's probably some sort of application or something. And you can download the raw content and inspect it and see what it is, what it was getting. Um, over here on the phone, it's asking us for, you know, display over other apps. Yeah, sure, why not? If we click into the ads block again, we'll notice that uh, it's asking to install unknown apps. Sure, that seems safe. We'll do that. And you notice over here on in our window that we're still getting all of that traffic and we're able to see inside of all of the encrypted sessions um, because we're using the man in the middle proxy now this malware does have an, an encryption routine for the data that it does send out that's this so it, it is sending out data and we're not sure what that is uh, you would have to reverse engineer the app to figure out what what they're using to encrypt that and then you can decrypt it potentially but the https encryption it's doing just for connections and stuff we're able to see through all of that stuff which is fantastic and eventually at some point this malware will um, it pops up a window in Chrome saying that your system is out of memory please you know click this button and download the thing to help your system you know restore memory or something like that I, I don't know but it takes a little while there's a little time out for it and it just asks for more and more permissions which is always a bad thing um, but yeah, so that's how you view inside HTTPS encrypted traffic from the emulated device and that goes for any other applications that are installed on the device. Um, and unless they're using something like certificate pinning, this man in the middle should work for all the traffic coming out. And you know, you can install filters up here to, to weed out you know, a bunch of callbacks and stuff that the phone does um, automatically so you can get rid of that noise. But yeah, so as soon as you're done, just close the window, close the window, get rid of this, hit the little X on the emulator, it'll save the state, um, you can just hit cancel if you don't care about the state, 
we'll go back into the AVD manager. You notice here now that you know the size is really large of our of our device. If we want to clear all that out and start with a new device, just right click, hit wipe data, now we're back down. So the next time you start it up it'll be like a brand new device. So yeah, um, again the script doesn't come with man in the middle proxy. Um, it's just something I set up because I got tired of doing it manually. Um, and I'll put that on our website and y'all can check it out if you need to. But if y'all have any questions about this malware or any, anything else on our site, go ahead and hit us up at ringzerolabs.com and we'd be happy to help.